In December 2021, Elon Musk was at the top of his career. Elon, you are reported as now, you know, the world's richest person. Are you sincerely trying to save the world? Well, I'm trying to do good things, yeah. Person of the year is Elon Musk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. But after that year, it all crashed down. Musk's problems at Twitter are what they say is tarnishing his reputation as a genius. Thousands of Twitter employees are being laid off as Elon Musk overhauls the company. Well, I think it's very important for an inclusive arena for free speech. Twitter has suspended several high-profile journalists who cover Elon Musk. So tell me how you lived for the past year. In transit, I guess would be the polite way to put it. I had to sell my house. I had to move. And you got death threats? Absolutely. Elon Musk has become the first person ever to lose $200 billion from his net worth. So what's going on here? Is Elon our only hope for getting to Mars and a sustainable future, or is he actually a threat to all of us? To answer this, we need to look at this full story. I don't think, I don't think you'd necessarily want to be me. I mean, the amount that I torture myself is next level, frankly. Or a never-ending explosion. It's just constant ideas, just bouncing around. Yes. Whew. All the time. I would like to die on Mars, just not on impact. On June 28, 1971, Elon Musk was born in Pretoria, South Africa and lived in Johannesburg. His father was a rich engineer and his mother was a supermodel. Given these parents, Elon should have had a good childhood, right? But that wasn't the case at all. When I was married, I was told about three times a day that I'm boring and stupid and ugly. And if I protested, then I got beaten up. He would be punching me and Elon would be between the seats hitting his father to stop him punching me. When he would be at home and punching me, Kimball and Tosca would be crying in the corner because they were really babies. They when Elon was eight years old, his mother and sister Tosca fled to Durban. But for some reason, Elon thought his father needed emotional support because he was now divorced. So Elon and his younger brother Kimball could stay with the father instead. But that was the decision he came to regret. Although his father could be funny sometimes and show the boys around in his cars, he most often abused them emotionally. Did you have a happy childhood? No, it's terrible. Why was it terrible? My father has serious issues. Okay, well, so you didn't have a happy childhood. It was very violent. Unfortunately for Elon, school was also not a fun place. You see, Elon was quite special as a kid. Already when he was three, he could have conversations with adults and seemed very intelligent. Sometimes he would be so focused in his inner fantasy world that he could not see or hear anything. You could jump in front of him or scream at him and he would not even notice. He was also small, thin and had autism. He found it almost impossible to make friends with others and was therefore bullied all the time. I do know that you were bullied at school. And had a I was almost beaten to death, if you'd call that bullied. On one day, Elon was pushed down the stairs and was so beaten by several other kids that he blacked out and had to get intensive care in the hospital. When he came home, his father punished Elon and repeated all the horrible things the bully said to him. All these school years plus his father permanently damaged him, which you will see throughout his career. To escape this childhood hell, he read all the books in the nearest libraries and even read Encyclopedia Britannica from cover to cover, allowing him to be the child who knew every fact. When Elon was 10 years old, he got his first computer. Adults were supposed to be able to program it in 6 months, but he learned to program in only 3 days. He made a computer game called Blastar, which he sold for $500. But it was also during that time that he got an existential crisis. Trying to figure out the meaning of life and, well, like what does it all mean? Because it sort of seemed quite meaningless. And then I read uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which was like, quite positive, I think, and sort of highlighted the, the, the 
an important point, which is that a lot of times the question is harder than the answer. And if you can properly phrase the question, then the answer is the easy part. To the degree that we can um, better uh, understand the universe, then we know, better know what questions to ask. And so I thought, well, to the degree that we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness and, and knowledge, um, human knowledge, then that would be a good thing. When he was 17, he desperately wanted to run away from his father and go to the US. Thanks to his mother being a Canadian, Elon managed to get Canadian citizenship as well. Thus he flew all the way to Montreal without knowing anyone or what to do. When Elon came to Canada, he managed to work at some odd jobs from shoveling vegetables to cutting wood, all while living on one dollar a day eating hot dogs and oranges. Eventually, his mother and siblings also came to Canada. And in 1989, Elon went to Queen's College in Ontario. He was tall now, did not want to live alone, and most of all wanted to meet girls. He was there where he met Justin Wilson. He would ask me out and I would say no. And he would call me up again and he would ask me out and I would say no. And it went on like this until we ended up living together. But two years later, he left her in order to study both physics and economics at the University of Pennsylvania. In other words, finally in the US. After he graduated, he was supposed to begin a PhD program at Stanford, but something else distracted him. It spans him. the globe like a superhighway. It is called internet. Allows users to access information and imagery from anywhere in the world. So just two days later, Elon quit Stanford and started together with his brother Kimball, his first company called Zip2. Back then, if you wanted to look up addresses, you had to use the yellow pages. But the two brothers wanted to make an online version of Yellow Pages, where companies could show their location, phone number, and even give directions like Google Maps today. But it was tough in the beginning. We got this dinky little office that had a leaky roof. The nastiest place you can imagine. And you lived in it too. And, and I lived in it too and showered at the YMCA. Because internet was this new thing that everyone talked about, Elon and Kimball started to get clients and investors. The investors were very impressed, but forced Elon to no longer be the CEO, but only the chief technical officer. Elon did not like that at all. It was like bullying in school again. But in the investor's defense, he was bad at managing people. He often fixed the other programmers' code and called them out for their mistakes in front of the other colleagues. But Zip2 was going fast though. In February 1999, Elon and Kimball sold the business to Compaq for $307 million. From that sale, Kimball got 15 million and Elon, who previously had 5,000 in the bank, got 22 million. It's definitely very cool. I like it a lot. Congratulations. Just three years ago, I was showering in the, yeah, at the Y and sleeping fine. on the office floor. And now, uh, Obviously, I've got a million dollar car and quite a few creature comforts. But Elon did not want to live a rich life on the beach somewhere. He was going to use all that money to start his next company. Even if the internet was booming, most people thought that online banking was extremely unsafe. But Elon had been an intern in a bank and found the entire banking industry very stupid and old-fashioned. With this upcoming online bank instead, people not need to wait. They could just see the money right there. Together with a friend called Harris Fricker, they created the company X.com in March 1999. But Elon was super obsessed with the coding and also very rude to his employees. He himself thought it was rooted in some quote disturbing psychoanalytical black hole or a neural short circuit. His co-founder Fricker couldn't take it anymore and left the company a few months later. Elon also found that if you have an insanely close deadline, people work way faster than usual. Thanks to this, he was able to open X.com in November 1999. So this is an ATM. What we're gonna do is transform the traditional banking industry. Once they allowed customers to send money over email, X.com took off. But another company called Confinity was doing the X exact same thing. Elon finally reached out to the other company and suggested that instead of competing with each other, they should be one company instead. So when both companies became one, Elon became CEO shortly after. 
but this time it was disliked by the new board members from Confinity. At one point, they had conducted a study that showed that renaming X.com to PayPal would make the brand much stronger. But Musk wanted the name X anyway, which left others resentful. They got the revenge in September 2000. You see, back in January the same year, Elon and Justine married each other. Nine months later, the couple decided to have their honeymoon in Australia and also meet new investors. On the plane, the other board members met in secret and decided that Elon would no longer be CEO again. Once Elon heard what happened, he felt like when the bullies threw him down the stairs. But surprisingly, Elon accepted what happened without any conflict and went on vacation back to South Africa. His decision to not fight back would save him seven years later. When Elon got home from South Africa, he felt very cold in his body and his ears were ringing. The doctors thought he would go over fast, but for the next few days he got so ill that he was unable to stand up. Another doctor saw that he had the deadliest version of malaria. If that doctor had shown up just one day later, the malaria would have spread so fast that Elon would have died shortly after. Thankfully, he survived but suffered brutal pains and nausea for the next 10 days. Justine later said that Elon dealt with more stress and misery than anyone else. At the same time, X.com became PayPal, the company grew rapidly and the co-founders sold PayPal to eBay for $1.6 billion. After taxes, Elon walked away with $250 million, which would today be worth $445 million. But rather than retiring or taking a vacation again, he remembered his childhood aspirations and decided to follow them. In the 1960s, the US and Soviet Union were racing each other to space. Seeing this rapid development, people thought that humanity would colonize other planets very soon. But just 10 years later, the race stopped and space technologies were moving very slowly. Something that worried Elon a lot. Elon thought he would be able to send a little greenhouse to Mars for $30 million. But rockets were way too expensive in the US. So he flew to Russia instead to possibly get cheaper ones. Even there, the Russians offered $18 million per rocket and even spit in Elon's face because they didn't respect him apparently. On the way back, Elon discovered something. If you say, what is a rocket made of? And say, okay, it's made of aluminum, titanium, some copper. And you can break down and say, what is, what is the raw material cost of all these components? And if you had them stacked on the floor and could wave magic wand, um, so that the cost of rearranging the atoms mm. was zero, um, then what would the cost of the rocket be? Yeah. And I was like, wow, okay, it's really small. It's like, you know, 2% of what a rocket right. costs. Right. Building rockets is extremely hard though, even if you're very good at it. Everything must work perfectly to get just the right speed and distance to Earth. Even if you get 99.9% .9 right, that 0.1% error would cause the rocket to explode or simply fall back to earth. But Elon loves taking risks for risk's sake. He loves to go all in and keep losing before winning everything eventually. So in 2002, Elon moved to Los Angeles, started SpaceX and hired world experts from the industry. If people wanted to work at SpaceX, they needed to be exceptional and innovative, meet Elon's insane deadlines, and most of all, dedicate their entire lives to the mission. And they just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. But a lot of people liked it and wanted to work with Elon, who very soon learned every tiny detail about rockets. Four years later, they managed to build a rocket called Falcon 1. On March 24, 2006, it was about to launch for the first time. Plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, plus ten. We have liftoff confirmed. When the engineers cried, Elon told them that they would build another rocket and try again. One year later, they were about to launch Two, their second rocket. One. We have liftoff. We have liftoff. 
separated. The stages are separated. Bottom line was we spun out of control. It went a couple thousand miles and then crashed in the ocean again. Elon, who had at that point spent $100 million on SpaceX, wanted to try again. But SpaceX wasn't the only company he was thinking of at the time. Elon was very worried about climate change and thought that electric cars would solve the problem. He was so obsessed with the idea that the first question he asked the girl at the party was, do you think about electric cars? Back then, nobody wanted to make them. Even when California demanded a small percentage of all cars to release no pollution by the year 1998, car companies filed so many lawsuits that California was forced to change the law a couple of years later. Then General Motors, who sold an electric car called EV1, stopped production, recalled all the cars that they sold and crushed them into little cubes. The previous electric car owners had no alternatives then, because starting a company is extremely difficult. There are massive costs of factories, people and marketing you have to pay up front, and many people must buy the cars in order to make the company profitable in the first place. Elon saw the current car companies as an evil mafia backed by the oil industry. But there was a tiny company called AC Propulsion that had made a prototype Elon loved. Two rich entrepreneurs who also loved it were Martin Eberhard and Mark Torpening. They believed they could produce a similar car, but with a profit. Both of them needed more money though and got in touch with Elon, who was very excited about the idea. So in July 2003, Tesla was born, with Eberhard as CEO and Torpening as president. Elon was the chairman and since he had invested 6.4 million into the company, he was the actual decision maker. Their plan was to first make a super expensive car for the ultra rich. With that money, they could produce a cheaper car for more people and then an even cheaper car for way more people. You could buy these cars directly from Tesla, not needing to go to any car dealership. 18 months later, a Tesla Roadster was finished. I think global warming is, is a very serious issue and, and it's something that, that we have to address. And the only way to address that is, is to come up with a car that doesn't add carbon emissions to, to the environment. Thanks to the success, they got 40 million from outside investors. But the media didn't mention Elon at all, but instead showcased Eberhard as a hero instead. So Elon wrote to the PR firm PCGC, if anything like this happens again, please consider the PCGC relationship with Tesla to end immediately. Making a lot of roadsters also turned out to be way harder than expected. The batteries kept heating up, but they even had to start completely from scratch. It was the beginning of a huge crisis that threatened to kill everything Elon had. Six years earlier, in May 2002, Elon and Justine got their first child named Nevada. But just 10 weeks later at the cousin's wedding, the baby suddenly stopped breathing and became brain dead. After three days in the hospital, they decided to turn off the life support and let the baby die while Elon cried uncontrollably. When you describe losing your firstborn child, I gotta tell you, I had tears in my eyes. That was uh, very, yeah. I'm sorry, very, very sorry. No, it's the saddest, sadder than I thought a human could feel. Elon and Justine decided then to get more children. They managed to get twin boys and then triplet boys, and all of them survived their first year. But Elon and Justine had brutal fights with each other. Justine discovered that Elon got a personality trait from his father called Demon Mode. Elon randomly switched from being loving and fun to being incredibly mean and possessed, calling Justine words like moron and idiot. To make things worse, Justine had released the novel Blood Angel, but Elon didn't care about their successes at all. She felt like he wanted her to be a trophy wife instead. So in June 2008, Elon and Justine finally divorced, and Justine shared all the intimate details on her blog that everyone could read. Elon had more problems to worry about though. 
The roadsters kept being delayed and the cost kept increasing despite the customers paying in advance. Because they had to pay up front for car parts that were shipped later than scheduled, the cost per roadster was now up to $140,000 but was priced at $100,000. The CEO Eberhard didn't even track how much the car part cost, which was why the numbers were shocking news. Elon was previously unaware of this since he was mostly focused on SpaceX, but when he heard the news, he and the board forced Eberhard to leave the company. To this day, Elon hates Eberhard with passion. Tesla tried to hire new CEOs, but Elon thought they were all bad. Finally, Elon stepped in as CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, but then catastrophe happened. Now it's official, we are in a recession. Lehman Brothers is going bankrupt. The American people are concerned about the situation in our financial markets and our economy, and I share their concerns. While all of this was happening, SpaceX was about to launch its third rocket. It carried satellites from NASA and the US Department of Defense and the ashes of 208 people. Of those people were James Doohan, who played Scotty in the original Star Trek. always three strikes and you're out. Unfortunately, they noticed that they had almost no money left. Elon himself spent all the money he had and even had to borrow from some of his friends, but it still wasn't enough. And Tesla was running out of money too. Both SpaceX and Tesla were like two babies to him, and he knew what would happen if one baby died. During this period of hell, he met the actress Tallulah Riley, who became famous for the movie Pride and Prejudice. According to Tallulah, Elon was very close to mental breakdown. He'd have night terrors in the middle of the night and be fast asleep and then suddenly he would be screaming in his sleep and sort of trying to climb up like in his sleep trying to escape something. He was under incredible stress. I was worried he was going to have a heart attack. I just kept thinking, God, I've just got to keep this guy alive. Ever since Elon sold PayPal, he was still good friends with other co-founders. When the third launch failed, the PayPal Mafia, as they called themselves, reached out to Elon and invested $20 million in SpaceX, enough to afford one more launch. And on September 28, 2008, the fourth launch was about to happen. Either it would succeed or Elon would be remembered as a business failure forever. Stage separation. Your separation confirmed. And that means Falcon wants the first privately developed launch. I don't need a new nervous system. That was awesome. You know, let's take it. It's fourth time for charm, right? So. <laughs> Despite SpaceX victory, Tesla was still days from going bankrupt. Elon tried to raise more money to survive, but the biggest investor, Alan Saltzman, was preventing the entire investing round because he didn't like Tesla's current strategy. Then on Christmas, two miracles happened. First, NASA was very impressed with SpaceX's recent launch and offered Elon $1.6 billion for 12 round trips to the International Space Station. SpaceX was now safe. Like I said, I love NASA. I, I literally had I love NASA as my password. Second, Alan Saltzman finally gave in and $20 million came through. One month later, the German car company Daimler invited Elon to come over because they were interested in making electric cars. When Elon showed how fast the roaster was, the Daimler executives were so impressed that they decided to partner with Tesla and invested $50 million into the company. Within the next two years, Tesla would receive $465 million as a government loan, another $50 million investment for Toyota, and on June 29, 2010, Tesla became a publicly traded company and got over $266 million on the first day. Tesla was definitely saved. We had a lot of uh, bloggers maintaining a Tesla death watch. 
Um, a day by day count of how long before Tesla right, dies. It seems that, that may, <laughs> they may be waiting for a while. Last but not least, he had Tallulah, who supported him emotionally during the crisis, and they decided to marry each other. And he said, I do, you know, I do really, really love you. He's just, it's like, you know, my brain is exploding. He sent two lorry loads of flowers to set for me. He was like, I, I just wanted to show you how much I loved you. With all this financial help, Tesla could develop the next car named the Model S. It would have a large touchscreen with almost everything you need to control the car. This was back when touchscreens in general were very new, even on phones. The Model S was, as world famous scientist Craig Venter said, a computer on wheels. In 2012, the Tesla Model S was released to the public. Yes! What the Model S is showing that an electric car can in fact be the best car in the world. Three years later, they managed to release a similar car, Model X. So one of the main inventions of the Model X is something that we call the Falcon Wing Doors. So we've been able to accelerate autopilot and, and bring it bring to market faster than uh, originally anticipated. It's on full autopilot right now. Oh, I'm not okay. touching anything. No hands, no... Feet, nothing. One year later, Tesla was not only making electric cars. You see, back in 2004, Elon's two cousins Peter and Lyndon Rive also wanted to make a difference in the world. Elon convinced his cousins to work on installing solar panels in American homes. Thus, all three of them founded Solar City, and Elon became chairman and main investor. A couple of years later, Solar City became the largest company in the US to provide solar energy to regular people. But since the company needed to buy all the equipment up front, they had over a billion dollars in debt. When Elon heard that, he was very angry. He thought that the solar panels were ugly and he hated the way his cousins sold their customers. He was too aggressive and they didn't have a great product in the first place. So in 2016, Tesla bought Solar City for $2.6 billion. Tesla would fix the panels and also combine those with their new Powerwall batteries. But the relationship between Elon and his cousins worsened, and when they left Tesla, Elon never wanted to speak to them again. During that time, Elon also started three new companies. The first one came out of frustration when Elon was stuck in traffic one day. He came up with the idea to build tunnels on the ground instead, calling it the Boring Company. By having a, an, an elevator, sort of a, a, sort of a, a car skate that's on, on an, uh, an elevator, you can integrate the entrance and exits uh, to the tunnel network oh just by God. using two parking spaces. But while the Boring Company was more of a joke, Elon had greater worries. Mark my words. AI is far more dangerous than nukes, far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. So he co-founded a non-profit OpenAI, which would develop AI in a safe way without destroying humanity. One solution to the latter was also Elon's third new company called Neuralink. It, it basically it implanted in your skull. So it, it could, in principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain, that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality. So now Elon had Tesla, The Boring Company, OpenAI, Neuralink, and of course, SpaceX. When SpaceX took off in 2009, Neil Armstrong was not a big fan of Elon. I support the encouragement of newcomers toward their goal of lower cost access to space. But having cut my teeth in rockets more than 50 years ago, I am not confident. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that, uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. But Armstrong was soon proven wrong. In June 2010, they had a new rocket called Falcon 9. With that rocket, they successfully launched an unmanned capsule to the International Space Station. And later that year, they also landed the capsule back to Earth in a safe way. Compared to the competitors who charged $380 million per launch, SpaceX only needed to charge $133 million for NASA and only $60 million for everyone else. 
so it was not a surprise that SpaceX got a lot of customers. But Elon wanted SpaceX to be cheaper because of Mars. The next logical step was to reuse the rocket, or at least reuse the first part called the orbital booster. The plan was to guide the booster from when it was released in space all the way to landing port either in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. It's extremely difficult though, kind of like trying to balance a broomstick on the hand in a windstorm. But after many different failures, it finally happened on December 21, 2015. Two years later, they had Falcon Heavy, which was three times bigger than Falcon 9. On February 6, 2018, it was time for it to launch, and that rocket carried a surprise. When all these achievements were happening, Elon and Tallulah divorced. I just wanted to come home. I do really love Elon as well and it took quite a few years of us figuring that out. When Tallulah left, Elon was very sad. Ever since he was 18, he could not imagine himself living alone without a woman by his side. He then met another actress called Amber Heard, who had played a role in films such as Aquaman. Amber was similar to Elon, being very playful at times, but most often addicted to chaos and drama. Elon was so fascinated by her that he wanted to dress up as Mercy in the popular computer game Overwatch, which she actually did. But after many brutal fights with each other, Amber broke up with Elon, which left him heartbroken beyond belief. He was so depressed that when it was time to reveal Tesla's new car, he tried everything he could to avoid looking like the most depressed guy in the room. Frankly, we're going to be in production hell. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome to production hell. The Tesla Model 3 was the car for the masses. It would only cost over $30,000 compared to the previous models. Because the demand was so high, Elon announced that they would produce 5,000 new Model 3s per week by the end of June 2018. Whether Elon wanted it or not, Tesla's fixed costs were so high that unless they did not hit that milestone, Tesla would go bankrupt again. But many of the machines in the factory were being automated in the wrong ways and there were other delays on the conveyor belt. Thus they only made 2,500 new cars per week. I'm definitely under stress, so if I seem like I'm not under stress then uh, I want to be clear, I'm definitely under stress. He says he has resorted to pulling all-nighters at the plant. When things get really intense, I don't have time to go home and shower and change, so I just sleep here. Last time I was here I actually slept literally on the floor because the couch was too narrow. Elon was in pure deletion mode. Every single part that was unnecessary had to be removed, and every single person who was somewhat responsible for the delays had to be fired as well. To give you an example of this, one day in October, Elon saw that one robot arm was misaligned and asked a new engineer called Gage Coffin, quote, did you do this? Gage, who loved working for Tesla seven days a week, asked Elon what he meant by the question. Elon then called Gage an idiot and fired him straight away. But surprisingly, the Tesla factory saw great progress. They fixed the automation issues and even built a 300 meter long tent outside the factory where they could build more cars. They managed to produce a seemingly impossible milestone of 5,000 cars per week in the last night of June 2018. According to Elon, this was achieved by the productivity secret called the algorithm, which had five steps. Uh, first, make your requirements less dumb. Your requirements are definitely dumb. <laughs> Uh, it does not matter who gave them to you. It's particularly dangerous if a smart person gave you the requirements because you might not question them enough. Then uh, try very hard to delete the part or process. Um, this is actually very important. If you're not uh, occasionally adding things back in, you're not deleting enough. Only the, the third step is simplify or optimize. The third step, okay. not the first step. Finally, you get to step four, which is accelerate cycle time. You're moving too slowly. Go faster. 
But don't go faster until you have worked on the other three things first. And then the final step is automate. Um, you and, might uh, think that hell was over for Elon, but it was just the beginning. Despite Tesla's and SpaceX's accomplishments, Elon did not like good times at all. It was like he had a fire in him that wanted to lash out somewhere, which he did. In the summer of 2018, a couple of boys from Thailand were stuck in a cave. To rescue them, Elon and the SpaceX team constructed a mini submarine that would be transported to Thailand. But when it was shipped to Thailand and Elon welcomed by the Prime Minister, the boys had already been saved by some scuba divers, who in turn were advised by the British cave explorer Vernon Unsworth. He wouldn't have made the first 50 meters into the cave, just a PR stunt. Elon Musk was on Twitter today calling one of the divers in that cave rescue a pedophile. Mr. Musk told the court it was wrong and insulting, so I insulted him back. Vernon went toe to toe with a billionaire bully. Not many people have the courage to do that. Then one month later, he sent out this tweet where he would remove Tesla from the publicly traded market and buy it for $420 per share. But in reality, he had no funding. Today, the SEC filed securities fraud charges against Elon Musk, the chairman and CEO of Tesla Motors, stemming from his August 7, 2018 statements disseminated over Twitter. Have you had any of your tweets censored? No. But how did they know if it's going to move the market if they're not reading all of them? So I guess uh, we might make some mistakes. Who knows? <laughs> Are you serious? I want to be clear, I do not respect the SEC. I do not respect them. And later on, both Tesla and SpaceX had other allegations. Elon became so impulsive that even family members abandoned him. His brother Kimball was a board member of both Tesla and SpaceX, but had primarily a restaurant business. In October 2018, his restaurants had financial troubles and they needed to raise more money. Elon first agreed to give $10 million to his brother, but then he refused. He thought the business was not financially sustainable and should go bankrupt instead. Given how much Kimball had helped him over the years in terms of keeping both Tesla and SpaceX alive in 2008, he felt this was a betrayal and broke up contact with his brother. One year later, one of Elon's children had enough of him too. He repeatedly wrote how much he hated his father and everything he stood up for. While Elon's other children remained loyal, Xavier broke up all contact with him to this day, something he's still very sad about. So here was the darker and more evil side of Elon, already before what was going to come in 2022, but Elon was about to escape the situation very soon. In 2018, Elon met the Canadian musician Claire Boucher, more known as Grimes. After Elon broke up with Amber Heard, he fell in love with Grimes and they became a couple. Like Amber, she was very expressive and had some public fights with other musicians. But unlike Amber, she was fascinated with various fantasy worlds, shared interests with Elon and wanted to be very kind to him. Elon and Kimball were reunited years ago, as well as his sister and mother. In May 2020, Elon and Grimes got their first child together. How do you say the name? I mean, it's just X, the letter X. The AE is like pronounced Ash. And then uh, A12, A12 is my contribution. Archangel 12, the precursor to the SR-71. Coolest plane ever. But unbeknownst to Grimes, Elon was soon to also have children with another woman from his company Neuralink called Shivan Zillis. Elon saw her as calm, extremely intelligent, and wanted her to have children. So leading by example, Elon and Siobhan got twins in 2021, a boy named Strider and a girl named Azor. In the same year, Grimes and Elon got a daughter they called Exa Dark Siderel, or simply Y. While Elon was busy with extending his family, Tesla released a new Model Y, which sold very quickly. SpaceX had recently created an internet service called Starlink, which would offer the best internet no matter where you are. But in May 2020, SpaceX brought astronauts on board for the first time. And Neuralink had also got an impressive achievement. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, 
Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. So in late 2021, Neuralink was worth a billion dollars. The Boring Company was worth 5.6 billion dollars. SpaceX was worth 100 billion dollars, while Tesla was worth 1 trillion dollars. In November 2021, Elon Musk was the richest person in the world with over 300 billion dollars. Later on, he sold almost all his belongings and also paid 11 billion in taxes. This didn't stop him from having such a positive reputation. I believe that humanity must become a multi-planetary space-bearing civilization. Who's Time's Person of the Year? The Person of the Year is Elon Musk. I, you know, I'm confident in the future in Tesla that uh, it will do well and um, I hope some of these other companies do well too. In February 2022, Russia started to invade Ukraine and also managed to destroy their internet. But in just two days, Elon's new subsidiary Starlink set up internet for the whole country and allowed them to fight back. Elon was very clear though that Starlink was only meant to be used for defending Ukraine and not for attacking Russia. He did not want to risk World War III, but he was more involved in politics in general. Well, I think it's very important for there to be an inclusive arena for free speech, uh, where all, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Elon had a special relationship with Twitter, where he posted updates and controversial statements, but most of all, funny memes. He feared that Twitter became more and more censored. It felt like bullying in his childhood again. Now when he was officially the richest man in the world, he not only wanted to punch the bullies in the face like he finally did back then, he wanted to own the entire playground. Between January and April 2022, Elon secretly bought shares from Twitter and finally owned 9.2% of it. He was then invited by Twitter's CEO Parag Agrawal to join their board. Although he accepted the offer, Elon was not impressed with the other board members who barely even used Twitter. He would then post his infamous tweet where he stated he would buy Twitter for $54.20 per share or $44 billion. Despite this shocking tweet, the board accepted it, but Elon became very angry when he asked Twitter's chief financial officer how many bots were on the platform and not getting an exact answer. For several months, Elon kept fighting with the Twitter board regarding the bot problem. Finally, in October 2022, Elon agreed to buy the company. <laughs> He quickly found out that Twitter was literally bleeding money. He had way too many employees, of which 2,500 were software engineers. He also had a company culture that stood for comfort, psychological safety, remote work, and a mental day of rest. In other words, a culture Elon was very disgusted by. So after he immediately fired the previous leadership team, he wanted to remove 90% of the entire workforce. Thousands of Twitter employees are being laid off as Elon Musk overhauls the company. Reports tonight roughly half the company's 7,500 employees now out of work. It's the most public series of unceremonious firings that have left employees very much in the lurch. When half of the workforce was gone, Twitter employee Joel Roth was tasked to moderate the content at Twitter. In an attempt to solve the increased amounts of bots and hate speech, they introduced Twitter Blue where any user who paid $8 a month was automatically verified. But when they released it, the results were catastrophic. This morning, the confusion over the verified blue check marks on Twitter is continuing on the platform. Wall Street is watching pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly today after someone impersonating the company on Twitter. All these scandals combined with an expected $2 billion loss made Elon angry and resentful. Remote work was also no longer allowed. Joel thought that Elon was a brutal tyrant now and left Twitter hoping it wouldn't backfire later. To make Twitter transparent, Elon wanted journalist Matt Tybee to whistleblow what has happened before. In December 2022, Tybee released the infamous Twitter file series. What we learned on Friday is that big tech works aggressively and in secret with government agencies to subvert the outcome of what the rest of us assumed were free and fair elections. The Twitter files also showed everything Joel wrote in the past. When Musk read it, he posted the following tweet 
which made Joelle's life like hell. Tell me how you lived for the past year. Shortly after this happened, the Daily Mail published where I live. I had to sell my house. I had to move. And you got death threats? Absolutely. Many of them on Twitter. I would encourage Twitter to take a look at the death threats targeting me, the death threats that were inspired by the company's leader. They're all still there. This transparency was soon diminished when Elon's two-year-old son X was threatened by a stalker. According to Elon, this was because of the Twitter account ElonJet, who tracked Elon's private plane in real time. Although Elon previously said that he would not ban the account, he actually did, and even banned all the journalists that were linking back to Elon Musk. Twitter has suspended several high-profile journalists who cover the platform and its CEO, Elon Musk. He's claiming these suspensions are taking place because these reporters put him at risk, potentially posting his locations. But there's not even evidence any of them did that. Musk's problems at Twitter are what they say is tarnishing his reputation as a genius. During the remaining 2022 and 2023, Elon continued to be erratic at times, from moving tons of servers during Christmas time to challenging Mark Zuckerberg to a boxing fight. He even created the company XAI to counter his previous OpenAI and Google. And Twitter is called X now, although the web version hasn't realized it yet. But in June 2023, Elon decided to step down as CEO and hire Linda Jacarino instead. So far, the user minutes seem to go up, and according to Jacarino, they have managed to get back 90% of the top 100 advertisers. Even Tesla has made some major progress recently, with Model Y being the top selling car on the planet and developing this human looking robot. SpaceX is now developing Starship, which will be the one going to Mars. Elon and Grimes also have one more baby called Technomechanicus or simply Tau, but their relationship is quite shaky to say the least. So is Elon a hero, villain or both? It's very hard to tell since everyone has their own perspective on this and I think you have to figure out your own conclusion based on what resonated the most with you. Out of all the 700 plus sources I went through in preparation for this video, I can highly recommend Walter Isaacson's recent biography. He has watched Elon closely for two years and here is what he had to say about him. You gotta take Elon Musk the whole cloth. The absolute intense person is what's getting his rockets launched. It also makes him a very difficult character. But if you had a chill Elon Musk, a restrained Elon Musk, we'd all probably like being around him a bit more sometimes. But I don't think he'd be the one shooting the rockets to Mars or getting us into the electric vehicle future. It's interesting though that Elon has not implemented this algorithm to himself given his previous achievements. He hasn't deleted the parts he doesn't like. What inner requirements has he not questioned yet? What does he really want after all? To this day, these questions remain a mystery. But I think it's safe to say though, that if we as humanity get to Mars, it will be most likely because of him. <laughs>